inoculating wire loops, whatever you want to call them, are one of those things that you're not going to use in your everyday life, but if you are a science hobbyist like me, especially if you're into like microbiology or mycology, uh, it is a tool that you're going to utilize from time to time. This is one that I bought off of Amazon. I think I got a three pack, uh, maybe like six or so years ago for, I think it was, it was pretty cheap, like 15 bucks. Uh, it's really, it's a really simple thing. All it is is a, wait for the car to go by. Okay, all it is is a really simple little twist of nichrome wire that ends at a loop, which is why it's called, conveniently enough, an inoculating loop, and that is attached to a, I guess this is an aluminum handle. So what do you use this for? Well, let me show you. I'm not going to demonstrate, like, an actual procedure with this, but I can at least show you what you do with these. Here's a, uh, a very old dried out petri dish that i kind of forgot about to be honest so we're just going to use this as an example to show you what you do take your inoculating wire and since this is nichrome it's relatively heat resistant you can heat this up to a very high temperature till it's glowing red hot whenever it's glowing hot any like little bacteria or yeast or mold spores or anything that was on the tip of this once you heat this to uh, glowing red hot temperatures, everything will be completely destroyed and turned into carbon dioxide, basically. So this will be a very sterile tip. Uh, so I'll show you that right now with just this little butane torch. So I can do this while I'm doing it on camera. There we go. Let that cool down a couple minutes, well, probably about 10 seconds. And then, like I said, this is a really bad demonstration because this is one dried out and I'm not used to doing this on camera. But then once your inoculating loop is cooled down, you know, you take whatever sample you want. In this case, we're going to be using this dried out mold colony and we'll just pretend that this agar slot right here is a perfectly viable and not dried out desiccated example of agar. Then you kind of rub that on there do that and then the key thing to do after you do an inoculation is to re-sterilize. You want to re-sterilize in between each inoculation step. Well, procedure, I guess. Uh, so the point of this video is not really to show you how to do this. I might do that in another video, but the point of this video is I need, well, I don't really need more of these inoculating loops, but I do want more. And I thought, let me zoom out here, I thought that since this is nichrome wire, I used to vape, so I actually have a lot of this, I don't think it's nichrome wire for like my uh, vape coils whenever I used to make my own, but it is nickel based and it's relatively heat resistant and pretty corrosion resistant too. I think I'm going to try to make some inoculating loops out of this, this uh, vape wire and these aluminum tubes. I got these at Hobby Lobby. As you can see, $3.99, so eh, $4 for five of them. The nice thing about these is they're hollow little teeny tiny tubes of aluminum, so we can make a loop of the nickel vape wire, and then we can kind of put that down into these holes and crimp the ends, and that should be all there is to it. I have my little mini hacksaw to cut the tubing because I want various lengths. I want some that are this long and then I want some that are half of this length just so that there's more variety for more control and stuff like that and I also want uh, these nichrome well these uh, inoculating loops not just for my biology procedures but in case I want to kind of do like a flame test of something I can use this to put it in my Bunsen burner you know the flame of my Bunsen burner and the more I have the better because I don't really want to do flame tests with something that I might be using for mushrooms or microbiology or something like that in case it has like different chemicals on it. So I guess the first thing that I need to do is, I guess I'll make the, the loop first and I'm probably just going to pretty much copy this one right here. I might make this a little thicker just so that it has more for the aluminum tube to bite into whenever we crimp it. And I might make the loop just a little bit bigger. But besides that, it's going to be very similar to this. I don't think I'm going to make it quite as long right here, though. Just so that's a little stronger. Because this is kind of floppy. But, yeah, let's get to it. 
I'm just going to make the loops. I'm not going to really talk. I'll just kind of record myself, but I'll speed that part up. And then I'll come back and talk on camera whenever I start getting these ready for the wire to be inserted and crimped into. Okay? That was actually pretty easy. So the next step would be to take one of these tubes. Let me open this up. Now, as you can see, the hole of these little tubes is actually uh, quite small, which is good. That's kind of why I chose these and it actually fits this wire really nice. It's already a really good friction fit, honestly. I'll still crimp that, but let me just kind of do that. So it's down pretty good. All right, and take this and just use these to crimp down on that wire and that's not going anywhere well, essentially that's it i now have a very long handled inoculating wire good now let me try my little bunsen burner here away from my phone so i'm actually going to move this up a little bit so it's not in the direct line of fire literally and figuratively okay let's test this is the one that i bought off of amazon this is an actual purpose-made inoculating wire and that's what you'd expect you'd expect to be able to Heat this until it's completely glowing red hot. And for it to cool down and still be like in good shape. Not to have like any oxidation or anything. At least not a, a really noticeable layer of oxidation. So, here's a close up of my homemade little inoculating loop. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but hey, it should work. That's what they said when they hired me at work. So let's try heating this up and see how this looks. And that looks perfectly fine. Has that slight little teeny tiny passive layer of oxidation on the outside, you know, on the exterior surface as you'd expect. But yeah, this is in a Bunsen burner flame. It's getting red hot and it's cooling down and it's still perfectly usable it's not melting it's not rusting away it's not flaking away so i think that this will work pretty well now obviously this would be better if i had actual nichrome wire and i could make you know like actual inoculating loops made from the thing that they're normally made from but i just want to try to make this with the wire i had on hand to see if this would even work and yeah it seems to be just fine so i'm going to turn my bunsen burner off Oop, not on further turn that off and i'm just going to make more out of the remaining four tubes that i have in this box and then once i'm done with that i'll just kind of come back conclude the video and bob's your uncle
decided to leave one tube just in case I ever need a small amount of like tiny aluminum tubing for whatever. Uh, but you can see, uh, where's the original one? So there's the original inoculating loop that I have. I do have two more of these, so I have three total of these, which are identical. And these are the ones that I just kind of threw together. Uh, I tried to make a couple of them sort of uh, similar in size uh, as far as the, the loops go. So these ones are pretty good. Uh, here's a, a nice large inoculating loop. This is probably more going to be for like flame tests and a Bunsen burner for different chemicals and stuff. Here's the one that I made you know, first, and it still seems perfectly fine. And instead of getting my Bunsen burner, let me just use this little butane torch just because it's more convenient. But, yep, yeah, that's totally fine. Not going to hurt anything, except for maybe my table. Yeah, it's fine. Who cares? Uh, so let's try this one right here. Just kind of testing out a couple of them to see how they stand up. Which, honestly, you'd expect them to stand up okay, because this is made for vaping. They're meant to get, you know, pretty hot. That one's fine. And I do want to try this large one right here. Now, it's probably not going to work too great with this little micro torch, just because the flame is really small and concentrated. So I would have to use this one for my Bunsen burner, which is okay. But I just want to test the principle of whether this will work with this giant loop. And as we can see, everything seems to be just fine. So there we have it. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven additional inoculating wires and loops to add to my previous three. So now I have 10 inoculating loops and wires that I can use for various mycology, microbiology. I can use it for chemical testing, you know, chemical flame tests. I have different lengths now. I have a really long one right here, which I kind of want for uh, like if I need to be far away from like a flame test and I made all the other ones shorter because like I said I have three of these size right here so I'll have five of the long ones and I'll have five of the shorter ones I uh, tried to have a little bit of variety so this one is more of like a I don't know if you can really see that but this one is more of like an oblong scoop for taking like little bits of uh, mushroom mycelium or something that should grab a hold of it a little bit better. Have average size loops that we're used to from the ones that I bought specifically for inoculating petri dishes. And I have some really, really tiny loops for, you know, like maybe uh, mold or not mold, uh, yeast and bacteria. So these are probably going to be used in some upcoming videos here whenever mushroom season finally starts up again where I'm at. So I'm actually quite happy with this. Uh, I don't have to buy any more. Now I'm not saying that this is going to be cheaper. It's only really cheaper if you already have this on hand, which I did because like I said, I used to vape. I do not anymore. So I don't really have a use for that. But this is actually a pretty good uh, application for these, for this uh, nickel wire. So let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Take care.